So the other day someone sends me a Facebook message and says, I've been scammed by someone using this man's picture. And I thought, okay, what do you want me to do about it? But then he goes off and says, I'm so depressed and suicidal. I have a gun ready on my head just waiting to pull the trigger. And I'm like, whoa, don't shoot. Now before I continue, I just want to say that suicide is never okay. And if anyone's having suicidal thoughts, you need to talk to a professional because nothing is worth taking your life. But this guy, who I'm going to refer to as Sean, was just a real mess. He went on to tell me that he met a guy on A4A, which I guess is short for Adam for Adam, a gay dating site. And the guy he met was supposedly named Henry Peebles, and he claimed he was a US soldier serving in Syria. And I guess they hit it off right away and had a little online romance, swapping pics and such, and Sean ended up sending him money from time to time. He said he gave him about $300 in cash and iTunes gift cards, and now was feeling like he was being scammed. And I'm like, dude, it's not worth ending your life over 300 bucks. And he said, no, wrong amount, 3,000. Ouch. But I said, still, you're worth more than $3,000. So I tried to figure out what went wrong, and I said, why did you send him money? He said, because I believed him. I'm a loser. I said, it's okay, he's tricked a lot of people. You're not a loser. And he said, what makes it worse is I fell in love with the man in this picture. All right, this dude is just a mess. And I just gotta take a second to point out the real effects of internet scams. I have a lot of scammers who watch these videos and you guys need to know the toll it takes on people. I mean, this was a very vulnerable guy who was just so desperate for love that he clearly missed some warning signs. Like the fact that Henry would never speak to him on the phone and that his photos looked a little, well, photoshopped? I mean, look at this. This guy's hands are smaller than Donald Trump's. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> so at first, Sean just thought he was helping out his boyfriend with cash and that one day he'd return back to America and pay him back and they'd marry. But this all starts to go sour when Henry tells Sean that he was crossing the border with a gun and he didn't have his military ID. So he got arrested and he needed Sean to bail him out. And Sean starts to get suspicious because soldiers, they always travel in pairs and the US Army would never abandon their soldiers. So Sean doesn't send him the money, which makes Henry sad. And these two lovebirds get into a little bit of a fight. <laughs> but then, Another dude enters the picture, and he hits Sean up on A4A. And he says his name is Johnson Rosario, and he's also a soldier overseas. The guy refuses to do a Skype call with Sean, saying that he prefers text. And this sends Sean into a spiral of depression because he realizes that he may have spent thousands of dollars on a scammer and that he was never in love at all. And that's when he contacted me. And apparently, Sean's not the only one. There are thousands of people falling for these military romance scams. The scammers steal pictures of US soldiers and then they make their victims think that they're talking to them. I even stumbled across a site with a ton of other people complaining about these very two guys. There are victims everywhere and the problem's only getting worse. This news report that I found reads, the US has already established numerous task force organizations to deal with these kinds of scams and other issues. Unfortunately, law enforcement's ability to identify these perpetrators is limited. So apparently nothing's getting done because these guys are still on the loose. So Sean ends up hiring a private investigator to see if he could find out who and where this scammer was. He pays the dude a thousand dollars and over the course of a month, here's what he finds. After careful inspection of the file, investigator researched the destination where the funds which were sent to Togo, West Africa. After extensive research, that area shows to be higher in online scandals. It was also the birthplace of the well-known Nigerian print scandal. Most respectfully. Wow, a thousand dollars for that. Any 12 year old with a laptop could have told us that. What is the matter with you people? Are you guys lazy or do you just suck at your job? Now the guy on YouTube is gonna have to figure it out for you. So while you guys were off screwing around on Google and calling MoneyGram, you somehow forgot that you had a golden lead. Their phone numbers, like, did you ever consider, I don't know, calling them or texting them? Well, I did. You just gotta figure out how to get them to talk to you, and the way you do that is to make them think that you have money. 
So Sean gave me Henry's number and I sent him a text. I said, to whom it may concern, my name is Pastor Benjamin Dover with Pleasant Green Ministries. Yep. Brother Sean is a member of my congregation. He's informed me that his friend Henry Peoples has been arrested and is in need of financial assistance. Our church looks out for each other and I will be willing to make payment on his behalf. Please let me know who I can work with to resolve the situation. Hours later, I get a response. And why do you want to help me in behalf of my husband, sir? Sean is my husband, but we're not yet married. Well then, he's not your husband. He would be your fiancé. But I said, he mentioned that Henry needed cash. He is unable to make payment at this time. He asked me for help. He said, we plan to meet in person, but I was arrested by custom with guns when coming to meet him just recently. And I said, okay, well, the church can help on his behalf. And he said, please, are you honest with me? I said, yes, of course. And he said, please, the money can be sent through MoneyGram. Receiver name, Henry Peebles. I want to surprise him because he thought I only needs his money. Sir, are you there? Hello, sir. Hi. Okay, this guy thinks that he's about to make some easy money. So I said, so MoneyGram, Country Togo, and name Henry Peebles? And he said, yes, the officers will take me to the bank to cash out myself. I said, please confirm the amount. He said, I'm going through hell as I'm talking to you now. $700. All right, so he wants $700. It's time to have some fun with this idiot. So I said, okay, Henry, the church requires me to have an official bill stating the amount due. We need to keep these for auditing purposes. Can you provide that? And he said, I will let you know as soon as they handle the document to me. They said I should hold on to provide me those details you need as assurance. I'm very sorry to delay you, sir. I will send you the fun peppers as soon as they call me for it. Sir, are you still there? I said, I am here. Just let me know when it's ready. And he said, I'm sure soon I send the information to you. The fund will be sent for my release. I don't want to remain here. I'm going through hell. So this poor guy's having a pity party, trying to make me think that he's in prison. So I tried to cheer him up. I said, I'm sure it's difficult. Are you a Christian? He said, yes, very difficult. Yes, I'm Christian. And you? Well, I am a pastor. I said, the Apostle Paul was often held in prison. He says in Romans 5.3 that suffering produces perseverance. And Henry said, yes, you're right, and I feel like I don't have any helper because I thought God is not alive to serve me through the pains I'm going through every day and night. God sent you to me, that's my belief. I lost all the hope in me because I thought no one was out there to serve me. You know what? I think I have a little bit of a knack for this ministry thing. So I kept his spirits up, while I waited for him to deliver the form from the prison. Hmm. He spent six hours on Photoshop and this is the best he could do. I said, great, I just need you to fill out the form for the church's records, then we are good to go. And Henry said, okay. So I quickly built a little Google Doc where he would be required to enter Sean's name and the amount of money if he wanted to get paid. I said, this is how we keep track of finances in the church. Then I did my favorite trick by creating a redirect URL with Grabify.link so I could track his IP address. Then I sent it to him. And within a couple of minutes, Henry said he had completed the form. He said, I just finished with the form. I'm done with it, sir. So I went to Grabify to see if he was stupid enough to click on my link. He was. And his IP address is placing him in. So now I gotta do a little bit of detective work. It's pretty clear to me that Henry and Johnson are either the same guy or they're buddies and they're tag teaming poor Sean. So I do a Facebook search for Henry and Johnson and I find a Facebook profile for Johnson Rosario using his exact same picture. Now this is clearly a fake account because he hasn't posted anything ever and he's only got one friend, a guy living in I think we found our scammer. So I say to Henry, okay, just a few questions. He said, what? What question do you want to ask? I said, I saw your document says Henry Peerless. I thought it was Henry Peebles. And he says, Henry Peebles. I said, okay, so why does it say Peerless? He doesn't answer, but he repeats, 
Henry Peebles. Six hours on Photoshop and he can't even spell the stupid fake name right. So I say, okay, one more question. Who's this? He says, that's you, right? I said, no, it's you. You're not in Togo, you're in Ghana. And he said, wow, LOL, funny, LOL. I need to sleep, man. I said, I tracked your IP address. He said, what the f is going on here? You're here to play games with my emotions, right? Yes, I am here to play with his emotions. So I sent him another picture. And another one. I said, prove I'm wrong. Take a selfie right now. He said, with a simple text phone, sir? I said, you're, you're using a Mozilla Techno CX Air. You sent me a graphic. You filled out a Google form. You're not using a text phone. And then Henry goes quiet, meaning that I think he knows he's been caught red-handed. But that's when Johnson starts chatting up Sean again. But Sean is pissed and he ain't falling for this crap. So he starts cussing Johnson out and he responds with a picture of our suspect. And Johnson says, how'd you get his picture? And Sean just lets him have it, cussing up a storm. And finally, Johnson breaks character and starts unloading on Sean, saying his grandfather stole wealth from Ghana and Sean is getting what he deserves. He then starts sending him pictures of shrines with Ghanaian phrases. Is he casting a spell on him or what? So Sean starts repeatedly video calling him until he finally answers, probably on accident. But Sean is able to get a screenshot. And there's our scammer. So, FBI, I'll have my phone on in case you need someone to actually help you finally crack some of these cases. Thank you for watching everybody, and thanks to Sean for letting me tell his story. Um, I told him that if I make any ad revenue off this video this month that I'm going to give it to him so that he can pick up his pieces and move on with his life. If you want to help him out too, I'll put some info down in the description. But thank you for watching. Watch out for scammers and we will see you next time. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna